travelers, it's Liz and Derek from Meets to Travel and today we are driving from our Airbnb outside of Falmouth in Cornwall to another part of Cornwall on the north side of, of the county called St. Ives and we're going to meet up with some friends of ours, one of whom might be familiar to you guys if you've been following this channel for a little while. And it's been a rainy morning here so far so we took a leisurely breakfast and we are now making our way over there for hopefully, fingers crossed, an afternoon cream tea. It's really a special type of tea um, in the Cornwall area so we are hoping to track one down um, at one of the places that we've been researching. So come along with us today as we do a little bit of Cornwall fun. <laughs> All right, Derek, what is this called according to you? I call this a hugging forest road because it's like it's embracing. The trees, right? The, the trees, trees are just cuddling you as you drive. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I love it. The road is wet today, so driving a little bit slower on this road than yesterday. But I love this. It's like going through a tunnel. It is. It's really pretty. And with a little bit of fall foliage, it's great. Yeah. How's driving overall? Good. It's not nearly as bad as I had anticipated. Um, a couple of people said that they thought that the hedge road, like rows like this, um, were a little bit more nerve wracking maybe than like Kent, but you know, I haven't found it to be that difficult. Um, now we haven't gone any like tiny, tiny roads here in Cornwall. So yeah. maybe if we go to some of the smaller towns, I will change my tune. We'll see. Yeah, this road is actually like pretty wide. We yeah. have done a few of the narrow one lane roads um, during our stay so far in the UK, but not yet in Cornwall. I'm sure those are to come soon. I mean, the, to me, the, the hardest road actually um, around here is that Churchill Road that we go up right by our Airbnb. Um, and that's an elevation issue. Well, it's elevation and it goes down to one lane yeah. occasionally. So, and it's like twisting tur cur like there's like major curves in that road so right. that one's tough for me this one this one's super easy um there are it, it is funny though when you're driving in the uk and you're used to these like no shoulder roads where you have to be extremely mindful of where your left tire is and where your right basically you want to hug the middle lane with your right tire at all times when you get to a place that actually has a shoulder on the road you're like oh my goodness it's like freeing <laughs> <laughs> You get to take a deep breath. Exactly. You don't realize that you're stressed until you get to a place with a shoulder. <laughs> it's great. Um, where, so your shoulders te get untensed by the presence of road shoulders. I guess that is true. Yeah. All right, I'll check back in with you guys once you get to St. Ives. Cheers. Okay, so we turned the camera back on because Derek was explaining kind of behind the scenes about what the difference between a Cornish cream tea is and a Devon cream tea, which is apparently a contentious thing here in the UK about which one's better. So Derek, what are we going to experience today with a Cornish cream tea? It's all about jam and cream placement on the scone <laughs> or the scone, depending on where you're from. Yes. So in Cornwall, the way you do it is you put the jam first, then you put the heavy clotted cream on top. Um, whereas in Devon, you would do it the opposite way. You do the cream followed by the jam. And we haven't like noticed how we typically do it when we get high tea. So yeah, so it'll be interesting for us to actually be mindful and think about like, you know, which way do we like it better? So we might try it both ways. Don't tell the Cornish people, but uh, yeah, see which one we like better. I'm thinking I might like the Devon style a little bit better. Don't tell. Um, and the reason for that is I think that if you put the jam first, which is very dense, and then the cream, they don't mix. They just, you know, they're not gonna hang out. They're not gonna have fun. They're not gonna party together. So if you do it the Devon way though, and you put the cream and then the jam, I think they might mix a little bit more. And that, that to me sounds really tasty. So, so it's all about like flavor combination for you. Yeah, I'm the kid who mixed all of this stuff together. <laughs> and I'm the kid that kept it separate, so we'll see where how this goes. All right, talk to you all soon. We were able to park our car in a pay to park lot at the top of a big hill in St. Ives, and we had this amazing view of the town as we made our way down towards the beach.
We met up with our friends Graham and Tara on the beach itself towards the end of low tide before the water rolled in. Derek was able to snap these beautiful photos of families playing in the puddles before the tide was scheduled to come back. After taking in the view for quite a bit on the beach, we meandered down the narrow streets of St. Ives to find our Cornish cream tea time destination and try our first ever Cornish cream tea. Okay, so we have started our cream tea process. I got the vegan cream tea and Derek got the regular. And we're still learning. We're all learning here. So we'll check in in a second. Um, what's the, uh, we do coke, we do the, pour this first and then next. Ah, uh, so, right, I kind of tried to explain this, but it takes a bit more explaining than the amount I was given in the comments video. Okay. So, All right, wait, let's, let's turn this on. Oh, <laughs> These are our friends Tara and Graham, by the way. We were having so much fun that we forgot to introduce them, so I thought I would do it real quick. Tara's a bit camera shy, so Graham's going to do most of the talking in this video. They're great. Right. <laughs> Get ready for some tea oh, wait, knowledge, wait, wait, guys. <laughs> this is our friend Graham. He's British. Hello, the world. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, looks quite nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take a quick photo. <laughs> tea. Tea. Right. Tea. We've, we've got to dive into a bit of history, tea history, oh, right. which is that um, it used to be it used to be brewed in the pot like this, exactly like this. But you would use uh, china teacups because the sort of porcelain we have now is not wasn't really uh, wasn't really around. But they're very susceptible to heat shock. So they used to tip in a bit of milk first to sort of temper when the boiling hot goes in. So the, the crop we didn't crack. Whereas if but, but you need boiling water to make tea properly, otherwise you don't get the, the lovely flavours of tea leaves coming out. If you put a tea bag in and then put milk on top, you just ruin the tea. So that's why you have to put the boiling water in first. But these days cups can take it, so it's not so bad. So boiling with the tea bag, boiling water goes in. Uh, absolutely, let that steep for about three minutes or something like that. Depends on the tea bag. The the kind of more ground or more kind of uh, torn up the leaves, like the less time you have to leave it. So all the cheap tea bags be really, um, really cut up, really tiny leaves, uh, and um, yeah, they'll just get the tea flavours out straight away. But they won't be very complex. Okay. And all the good stuff is like quite, quite. So, a, do we think that we have good stuff? I should hope so. <laughs> right. it it's in a bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's probably good because we haven't, tea, we haven't got tea straight. Yeah, shall I, uh, should, we, should we go in? Sure. There we go, we don't have a broken Thank you, sir. plate. Also, someone like, grandma or something said you have to like, pour a little bit out onto the saucer for some reason. That was a done thing. I think again, maybe to- Grandma, leave a comment below. <laughs> From the other side. <laughs> YouTube up there. Oh sure, absolutely for sure. <laughs> this movie's about to take a whole new genre turn. <laughs> so we go, that's the history of uh, tea, I guess. <laughs> okay, so no milk first. I mean, well, I it's, our, it's already yeah. steeped. It's so steeped. Steeped. You can put milk in there if you like okay. first. It sort of doesn't matter because nothing's going to break. That was the only reason you put milk in there. Okay. But you absolutely can't pour uh, like the hot water in with the milk and then the tea bag. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, you did it. So, this is the Cornish way jam, then cream. And that's Devon cream, then jam. Which seems to be how Graham takes it. Mm. There's a reason, though. Oh, yeah. Mm. Right, I don't really care which is which, but 
whoever's got the more structure needs to go down first, because otherwise it will just push away the looser thing underneath. Mm. So I'm very practical. Approach to um, cream teas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have done it the Devon way uh, with my strawberry jam and my vegan cream. So here we go. Good. Good. It actually could use a little more cream. <laughs> Okay, so here's the Cornish way now. So I already put the jam on the scone, which we've decided it is a scone and not a scone where we currently are. Now I put the cream on top. Again, this is vegan cream, so I'm sure regular cream would spread a little bit better, but you know. Taste difference, anything? It's actually like, it makes me a little bit colder. I don't know if that's a thing that's supposed to happen. But I think it's just it's been sitting out longer. Maybe. Other than that, <laughs> you know, it tastes the same. Mm -hmm. I'd fold you up your back. St. Ives is an extremely popular seaside resort town in Cornwall, which means it is very important to book far in advance if you want to travel here, especially during the summer high season. Most of the lodging options include boutique hotels, bed and breakfast, and vacation rentals. If you plan a visit, also be sure to make your reservations for dinner in advance because tables can book up quick and maybe even consider lunch and tea time reservations as well. The origin of St. Ives dates back to the 5th century and is attributed to the legend of the arrival of the Irish St. Ives of Cornwall. Since the medieval era, fishing has been extremely important here. Back then, the town was one of the largest fishing ports on the Cornish north coast. St. Ives has had a pier since at least the 1400s, and the pier was rebuilt between 1766 and 1777 after falling into disrepair, and later it was lengthened even further. With that, both fishermen and seals seem to be big fans of the local catch. Tell it to his face. <laughs> hey guys, checking in from the pier here in St. Ives and I've got my cider. Derek and Graham have their tripod set up for some photography and Graham's getting the drone set up. So we're gonna watch him fly this bad boy. Wait for it, compass error, hold on. It's got a lot of different light colors. What do those mean? Uh, I think they so you can tell which way it's facing. Uh, um, although the blinking ones I'm a bit worried about and it says compass error. And the aircraft. Oh, I have to calibrate the aircraft. Okay. He's calibrating the aircraft. Okay, now we fly when I'm dizzy. Perfect. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's launched. Okay, bye. Oh, that's so neat. Derek, wave. <laughs> <laughs> Our drone's coming in for a landing. This feels risky. Probably is. <laughs> You're on a pier. It's very narrow. <laughs> I have total faith in your pilot abilities. Now, do you ever try to catch it or do you just let it land on the ground? I can probably catch it. Do it. You're on camera. Catch it. You're cheating. Oh, 
Nice. Got it. Sunset at St. Ives can be absolutely beautiful on a clear night. If you choose to watch it from the pier, you'll get an incredible harbor view in the foreground as you face west. We really loved watching the fishing boats and buoys bob in the waves. As Liz mentioned earlier, you might want to consider planning your dinner reservations around watching the sun set. For us, we'd wanted to go to a top-rated Thai restaurant on the harbor front, but alas, it was fully booked. And that's despite the fact that we were there in mid-October during shoulder season. So instead, we found a fish and chips shop nearby that had a great menu, and the four of us were able to get a table without having to wait too long. Yum! We had a great rest of our night after we were able to watch the sun set at the St. Ives Harbor, and we went over to a fish and chips place with our friends called Harbor Fish and Chips. Was, it was amazing! Derek loved it. Oh, I liked it too. I was able to get um, breaded haddock and chips, and there was these little crisps on top, or yeah. chips as we'd call it in the U.S., that were like sweet potato crisps. So good, so extra. But I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up down below. Also, don't forget to press that red subscribe button down below so you don't miss any of our future UK travel vlogs and other travel videos on this channel to come. Thanks everybody for watching. Cheers, happy travels. Bye. Bye. Hey travelers, don't forget to subscribe and let's hang out more. Here are some links to other helpful travel videos on my channel and press that notification bell so you don't miss any new and awesome travel videos to come.